Welcome to Chapter 2 of Noble Discoveries. In this chapter, we will discover the galvanic series of metals. Ahoy, Mike. Don't forget to mention that our friends should first view Chapter 1, where we introduced ourselves and the Noble, our research boat. Oh, hi, Elbin. Thanks for reminding me. No problem, Mike. I'm here to keep you out of trouble. Speaking of trouble, I heard that the different metals on boats actually make electricity. Let's discover for ourselves if that's possible. We'll start by opening the Noble while she is floating in fresh tap water and see if we can get a voltage reading on our meter. Electricity, as you called it, can be measured as potential difference. Using a multimeter, we can measure that difference as voltage. Look at that, our first discovery. That's right, Elvin. Our first discovery is that the types of metals often found on boats do generate a measurable potential difference or voltage. And here are the results. Is it true that where there is voltage, there can be corrosion? That's correct, Elvin. That's why this type of voltage is often referred to as corrosion potential. Like most industries, the yachting industry follows many standards. One of the more widely accepted organizations that define standards is the American Boat and Yacht Council, known as ABYC. ABYC standards are followed by manufacturers and insurance companies. In ABYC's electrical division standard, there is a chapter on cathodic protection, E2, where they have a table that lists various metals and their associated corrosion potential. Ahoy! I just looked at ABYC's chart, and our readings are different. Here's what they have. Quite true, Elvin. So why do you think our readings are different? Well, I see that the water in our test tank is kept in motion by a small pump, and the water temperature is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. So far, so good. ABYC does mention two more things in their chart. One is a silver-silver chloride reference cell, and the other is that they are using seawater. A silver silver what? A very important piece of equipment that is needed to accurately measure these voltages is called a silver silver chloride reference cell, also known as a corrosion reference electrode. Until now, we were just using one of the probes from our multimeter. From now on, we'll use a silver silver chloride reference electrode and see if our measurements are more accurate. Wow, now that's more like it. We have discovered something else. Yes, we have. We have discovered where the numbers on the ABYC E2 chart come from. We have also discovered that in order to get accurate readings, we must use a silver-silver chloride reference electrode. When we did not use the reference electrode, we were off by an average of 208 millivolts. When we used the reference electrode, we were only off by 38 millivolts, which is easily within the accuracy of our meter. That's well over five times better with the reference electrode. What happens to our readings if we add salt to make seawater? After all, the chart from ABYC uses seawater. Let's find out, Albin. Since seawater has approximately 35 grams of sea salt per liter of water, for the amount of water in our tank, we need about 90 ounces of salt. Not a lot of difference in our measurements. True with an average difference between our freshwater discoveries and saltwater discoveries being off by only 16 millivolts, 
we can use fresh water in some of our future demonstrations and chapters. Speaking of future chapters, what's next? In Chapter 3, we will take what we discovered so far and find a way to protect our boats from corrosion using sacrificial anodes and bonding. Here's wishing that all of your adventures are most noble.